So we are continuing to look at Haggai in the little sticky pages towards the end of the Old Testament. Uh, you turn to page 948, 948 in the Bibles on your chairs. Good to have a Bible in front of you. We're going to refer to it. Page 948, when you found the page, that uh, guy has only two pages, then um, keep your finger in it, and then let's hold the Bible in our hands and make a declaration as to what it is that we're reading from. I hold God's word in my hands. It encourages, corrects, and instructs me. Lord, speak to me now. That is our prayer. Lord, speak to me now. So we look at Haggai chapter 2, the first half of the chapter. Next week we look at the second half of the chapter and uh, that completes our mini-series uh, on Haggai. Chapter 2 verse 1, on the 21st day of the seventh month, very specific, we'll look at that in a moment. The word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah. To Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, ask them, who of you is left who saw this house, that's the temple, in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong. Zerubbabel declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the Lord, declares the Lord. And work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. And my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says, in a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the seas and the dry land. I will shake all nations and what is desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. And I've missed out a slide. No, it's it. okay. Remembering we're thinking about priorities as we look at this series for three weeks from Haggai. And uh, today I want us to think about the, the motivation, the motivation for sticking with our priorities. Uh, we're not always motivated to do things. Um, I was talking to a bus driver the other day and he said, I've lost all my motivation for driving a bus. I need a coach. <laughs> The other day I went to see a motivational speaker. Well, I knew it is. Um, the truth be told, we spend so often more time discouraged than we do encouraged. And as a minister, believe me, I can be much more discouraged than encouraged. And maybe you got a hint of that last week. A pastor and his wife can get very discouraged for a good deal of the time. So how do I stay focused when uh, not encouraged? How do I stay motivated? In the same way, you will not always be encouraged yourselves. What can you do then 
to stay motivated when you feel discouraged. And a lot of us, can I say, feel discouraged at times, and you kind of are, the, the temptation to just go, hmm, what's the use? How can we keep motivation going? We started this series um, last week, looking at the, the two pages in our Bibles of Haggai. And uh, last week we said that the people of Israel had been taken off into exile by the Babylonians, uh, for 70 years and then some had returned to the ruined city they had built the city walls under Nehemiah they had laid the foundations of the temple and then they stopped they got sidetracked as we saw last week they got sidetracked into building their own homes their own infrastructure trying to feel good about themselves because they had been taken off and now they come back and they now want to build themselves up. And they kept putting off and putting off building the place that gave God the glory. So God raised up a prophet named Haggai to challenge them, to get them to see their priorities, to get their priorities back into sync with God's priorities. And we saw last week from Haggai's first message to the people that our true priorities are revealed in how we spend our time and energy and finances so often. That when our priorities are misplaced, life stops working in the way that it should. And uh, if you weren't here for last week, then uh, it is on YouTube. Uh, that you can watch the message. When we realign our priorities with God's priorities, that's the best thing to do, we realign our priorities with God's priorities, then God's blessing can start to flow. I hadn't thought about this before, but if you imagine a pipe in this hand and a pipe in that hand, and God wants to send his uh, his way of doing things through our lives and, and into the people and bring the water of life into people's lives. If our pipe is out of line, if our priorities are different to his, might be that way around, uh, then the water can't flow, then God's blessings can't flow. It's only when we align our priorities with his that we have the flow. Um, the people of Israel responded to Haggai's sermon with obedience and commitment and soon God was stirring their hearts to rebuild the temple again. But we are going to look at what happened today when they grew discouraged. They'd started the work, they'd done what God had told them to do, but they started to get discouraged. And we're going to spend a few moments looking at the cause of discouragement in our lives. We're going to look at the solution to discouragement in our lives. And then we're going to look at the result of pressing on <coughs> despite discouragement in our lives. So have a flipped open, if you will, Haggai chapter 2. Um, and the first few verses there. We start with the cause of discouragement. Uh, look at verses 1 and 3 of Haggai 2 to see the cause of discouragement. Here we learn that we become discouraged when, we, when, what the, when what we do seems not to make a difference. That is discouragement so often. Isn't it? We kind of think, well, what I'm doing is not really making an impact. It's not really doing what I thought it was going to do or whatever and we kind of get discouraged because you know we can you know, keep pressing on and pressing on and then nothing happens so we think and we kind of then get discouraged and want to give up. The date Haggai gave this second message is very important. I said to you when I read it uh, that I've come back to it. And uh, Haggai as we said only preached for a very short space of time. 
And he says here, the 21st day of the seventh month in Israel's calendar, which was the last day of the week-long celebration, the week-long festival of the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> okay, well, great, what's that mean? The reason this day is so significant is because it is, to the exact day, 430 years after King Solomon dedicated the first temple that he built to God. Solomon's temple, of course, was magnificent, was a masterpiece of architecture, was built by craftsmen. It was a wonderful place, and everyone knew that this was the place that God was honoured because of the elaborateness and the cost of putting it together and how wonderful it looked. And 430 years before Haggai gave this word was the day when that temple was dedicated to the Lord. And in their minds, you can imagine it, this second temple that they're starting to now build Having gone into exile, the Babylonians had destroyed the temple beforehand, Solomon's temple, and now they're coming back. And remember, they came back to a lot of rubble and so on. We talked about Mosul last week as a kind of an illustration to that. And uh, they're coming back, and they have to start from scratch. They're building the, the, um, the foundation, and now they're building the temple, and they're looking at it, and they're comparing it to Solomon's temple. Hmm. Hmm. This is not as good as Solomon's one. And they felt their contribution to building the temple was insignificant. What can we do compared with what King Solomon managed to do with this temple? <laughs> you know, we're just building up a little, little building. And they felt so insignificant. Sometimes when we work hard to get our priorities back with God's priorities, which is what they were doing, they were trying their best to, to now build a temple that was going to be honouring to God and what he wanted them to do, and this is what Haggai said, rebuild the temple. It seems that their efforts were so small, so insignificant, so pointless, that they got discouraged. And so many times in ministry, the enemy puts dark glasses on us. It's the only way I can describe it in short terms. He kind of shows us discouraging things. You know, you can have rose glasses, glasses. The devil seems to put dark glasses on us. And everything goes grey. Everything goes, mm, not as good as I thought it was going to be. Not as colourful as I thought it was going to be. And he shows us all the discouraging things and turns us away from those things which should be encouraging us and motivating us. That's what the enemy does. And we end up kind of saying, what am I doing? Nothing really much. What's the point? What difference is my little contribution making? That's what the enemy does. He puts on dark glasses on us and kind of says, yeah, it's, it's still all grey, isn't it? You're not really doing that great deal. And all of us know, all of us know what it feels like to have those encouraging, to those discouraging times. And we kind of, at times, we rearrange our priorities and we think, yeah, we're trying to get, get right with God now. We're trying to read the Bible more. We're trying to take up ministry here. We're trying to do that. And then the devil puts on our dark, his dark glasses on us and we can't oh, really doing that much, is it? I feel so insignificant from what I'm doing. I'm not really making a difference. And that's how... Discouragement comes along. That's the cause, really, of discouragement. 
So what's the solution when we feel like that? And a lot of time we go admit that we do feel like that. What's the solution to it? Look at verses 4 and 5 in Haggai 2. Here we learn that we stay focused on kingdom priorities, on God's priorities, when we remember God's promises. We've got to remember God's promises. And, and the people of Israel at this time, They've been in exile, remember, they you know, felt they were away from God and now they come back with a rubble and it all seemed to be very messy and they don't seem to be achieving a great deal. And so Haggai reminds them of God's promises in verses 4 and 5. The Lord says, be strong, be strong, all you people of the land. Carefully chosen words. Be strong, all you people of the land, and work, for I am with you. People of the land. Remember, God gave them the land. He even refers to coming out of Egypt, which we looked at only a couple of weeks ago with Moses. And He'd given them this land. This was the land flowing with milk and honey. This was the promised land that they had headed towards all those years and settled in. And yes, they'd been taken off in exile. But this was still the promised land and they were heading back now. We are back in that land. God promised us we would be here. And even though we were away for uh, a generation or two, we are back now. And it may not be how they wanted it to be, but they were back in the land that God promised to them. And the Lord says, carry your back now, be strong. Be strong. And work. Don't give up. This is the land. This is the place I want you to be. Now be strong and work. Get on with it. And if you are discouraged in the work and the priorities that you have for the Lord, and you kind of think, ah, I don't know. Then take these words from the Lord. Don't sit down. Don't kind of just, oh well. Don't give up. Don't listen to the enemy who puts on the dark glasses on you and makes everything look grey and cloudy, he says on a grey and cloudy day. But the Lord says, here's the land, I've given it to you, now be strong and work. Verse 5, the beginning of verse 5, this is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. This is the promise, this was the agreement I made with you. We had a deal. We agreed. I took you out of Egypt and long journey short, if you like, they got into the promised land. Here it was, land of flame with milk and honey. You had date palms and you had rivers and wonderful. I never said anything was going to be easy, says the Lord. In fact, you will find in the Bible, in fact, I would say, find me anywhere in the Bible where God calls someone to serve him and it's easy. But he says, you work, be bold, and I will be with you. Second part of verse 5. My spirit remains among you. Do, sorry, do not fear. God has given us similar promises as Christians. God is with us. Work. Be bold. Serve me well. Even if you get discouraged, keep going because this is my work and this is the 
your motivation. You should have, don't listen to other people. Don't listen to the enemy and putting on dark glasses on you. You just work and serve me well. Keep going. You are not ultimately, says the Lord to us, serving other people. This is one of the biggest motivations in my life when I can get discouraged and down. Because the Lord says to me, you're not actually serving other people. You're serving an audience of one. You're doing what I want you to do. And that's the important bit. And the Lord says, I am with you. God has entered into a covenant relationship, an agreed relationship between him and us. In this new covenant, we are assured that all our sins are forgiven through Christ's death on the cross. We are given assurance that God is our provider and that he will meet our needs. Jesus himself promised us that if we seek his kingdom first, our lives and our material needs will be met. That's in Matthew 6 and verse 33. There's a priority there, isn't there? Seek first the kingdom. Seek first God's will in your life. That's a kingdom when he is king. Seek my will first. Put me on the throne first. And all the other things will fall into place for you. That's your priority. Get the pipes matched up. And then things will flow. I will look after you, says God, if you keep in my priority. When you're discouraged, we do well to remember this. Finally, God's Holy Spirit isn't just among us. See, when God made this word through Haggai to his people, he said, I am with you. And that is true. That was true and it still is true today. But we have one better than that. Because when Jesus came, he said, I am going to send my comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he's going to <coughs> be in you. It's going to be in you, not just with you. As Christians today, the Holy Spirit lives inside us to lead, to lead and guide. So the Lord now says to us, are you discouraged? Are you feeling down? Are you feeling you're not having a great impact? Then be strong. Work hard, and I am with you, I am in you. Last thing, briefly, the result of staying focused despite discouragement. Verses 6 to 9. Staying focused on the work the Lord has called us to do will bring results. If we're not discouraged, if we're not pushed to one side, if we don't start taking up other priorities, if we don't start getting things out of the wrong level, if we start lining ourselves up with the priorities of the Lord and we work hard, then we will see results. Here we learn in verses 6 to 9 that when we stay focused on kingdom priorities, in the midst of discouragement, God uses us as in the video God uses us beyond our limits because we've got him inside us we're serving him we're giving him uh, the audience we make him the audience of one and then he uses us and the biggest reward is not that I am with you I am within you, but he says, I am coming again. In Haggai, he's talking about the time when Jesus comes. Some point in the future, God says, I'm going to shake things up. You're building this temple. 
It's not as grand by any means as Solomon's temple. But you're building this temple and I'm going to shake things up in the future. It's going to be a few hundred years down the line but I'm going to do it. And he says, God promises that the glory of this second temple, this little temple that nothing compared with Solomon's one, will eclipse Solomon's magnificent first temple. The reason is because it's going to be this temple that they are building today with Haggai's push behind them is the temple that Jesus would come to in Jerusalem. It's the temple that Jesus went to worship at. And Christ is coming. First time he comes, he is coming as Savior. He came as Savior and he went to that temple that the people were building at this time of Haggai. But for us, we have the assurance that Christ is coming again. And the result of the be strong and the work hard and the I am with you, no, I am in you, is that Christ will come again as triumphant king and will take his good and faithful servants into his house. When we rearrange our priorities and get in tune with God's priorities, There will still be times when we feel disencouraged. But most of us know what that's like already. But at those times, instead of being tempted by the enemy to give up, what difference are you making? You're not doing a great deal. Nothing's really happening. The Lord says, be strong. He says, work hard, mm. keep going, and I am in you. Christ will come again as triumphant king and take his good and faithful servants into his house. Let's stay focused when discouragement comes, that we will serve this audience of one, because he is the one that we are going to be with forever and ever.